Hey guys, just want you to know that I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So, I'm gonna do this video all over again for <laughs> lesson 1.1 in financial algebra. So, chapter one is um, on discretionary expenses. There's two kinds of discretionary, there were two kinds of expenses, and Lesson 1.1 covers that. There are discretionary and there are essential. Discretionary are things that you want, not need, okay? So I am not going to go over all the vocabulary. You guys have a book. You can use the book for vocabulary, okay? So this section goes over needs and wants, and it goes over what gross income is, which is super important once you become an adult. But I'm going to jump into the math part. So lesson 1.1 goes over things called measures of central tendency. Okay? And there are three types of measures of central tendency. One is mean, median, and most. You should be, should be, I say should, you should be familiar with these, these should be review, and but I will quickly go over. So first of all, mean is your um, another word for the average. Now in this book, there's a symbol for it, and the symbol for it is X with a line above it. That is the symbol for mean, and it's the same as the symbol that we'll see in our calculators. Okay, so just in case you don't remember how to go over it, you, you find the sum of your data divided by the number by the divide by number of items. Okay, so that is median. I mean, sorry, mean. Median is another word for middle. You have to find the middle of your data, but in order to do that, you must list the data in numerical order. You start with the smallest number and you list it all the way to the largest number, and you locate the one in the middle. Mode, right, is the number that occurs most frequently. So most frequently occurring item, and you can have more than one. You can have one mode, two modes, no mode. All of that is possible. Um, it also goes over an outlier, so um, really quick, out, aww, another pen that's dying, all done. So outlier, it talks about this, I don't do a ton of examples on it, but an outlier, it's like, I mean, it's an outlier, it's a piece of data that's extremely different from everything else, so it's a piece of data extremely don't tell me this one from it from the rest. Okay, so it sticks out and an outlier and it goes over this in the book again. You guys have textbooks. Um the outlier skews our data. So it meaning it it can mess it up, right? Because if an outlier doesn't fit with the rest, then it kind of ruins our mean and our median, and it, it makes it look messy, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do an example with you of mean median mode, just in case you've forgotten, okay? So I'm just going to give you the data. I'm going to say this is a discretionary expense. It's the, let's say this is the, um, let's say this is cost of tools, or no, I'm going to do music streaming services. Okay, so and here's our data. We have, I'm going to list it $10 per month is one, um, $6 per month is other, $33 per year is another, $3 per month, $5 per month, $10 per month, another $10 whoops, per month. 
$4 per month, $12 per month, and $60 per year. All of these have dollar signs, I'm just being lazy. So there's our data, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of data. So let's first start with, they have to all have the exact same time period. So I have all a bunch in a month, but I have two that are per year. So if you run into this in your homework or you have different time periods, you have to convert those to be the same time period. So $33 per year, I'm going to divide that by how many months there are. There are 12 months. So that would equal, if I divide 33 by 12, I ended up with 275 per month. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other one that was $60 a year. So $60 divided by 12 gives me $5 per month. Okay, so I'm going to use these in place of these two, okay, for, uh, for the rest of our data. So B, we're going to calculate the mean. Okay, so um, the mean would look like the following. And I'm going to kind of work towards what they're going to try to get us to towards the end. So to find the mean, right, I'm going to add up my data. So I've got, this is how I enter it. I have 10, but I notice looking at this data, I have one, two, three. I have three tens. So I'm going to enter this. There are 10, there are three tens. I'm going to render that instead of entering 10 plus 10 plus 10, I'm going to do 10 times three because there's three of them. Plus, the next bit of my data is 6, and it's the only 6 I see. Don't forget these two. 33 per year, well, we change that to 275, and there's only one of them. So that's taken care of. $3 a month, it's the only one, so plus 3. 5, there's only one 5. Oh, no, this one down here. So I have 5 times two because there are two of them plus four plus twelve divided by ten pieces of data. So then I'm going to use my calculator to enter that. So I have, I'm going to clear this if you can see this. So in your nifty nifty calculators I have ten times three, that's what this says, plus 6, plus 275, plus 3, plus 5 times 2, plus 4, plus 12, and I get 67.75 for my total. And I'm going to divide that by the 10 months, and I get a mean of $6.78 per month. So on your homework, be really careful if they ask you to round, like round to the nearest hundredth, or round to the nearest thousandth. Be really careful. So in um, in the book, you'll see, like it'll say your, your times places. And I guess I should have put that at the top of my notes, but I can put it somewhere in here. If on your homework they're asking you to round, pay attention to whether it says tenth, hundredth, thousandth. So this is your tenth. This here is your hundredth. And this here is thousandth. Okay, so be really careful. All right, so C. Let's find the median. So remember, to find the median, I have to list my data in numerical order. And so that is what I'm going to do, starting with the smallest, so 2.75, 3. I'm just looking at this. There's 2.75, 3. There's a 4. There are two fives. There's a 6. There are three tens and a 12. Starting from the outside, I put a finger on each and I work towards the middle. So 
next one, next one, next one. Notice I have two numbers in the middle. So 5 plus 6 divided by 2 equals 11 over 2, which equals 5.50. And I'm keeping it in dollars because everything so far is dollars. Okay, D, mode. There are three tens, so $10 is your mode. Okay, next one. So the next example I'm going to do with you is, okay, so number two. So I'm going to give you um, student expenses. So, and these are like per month, so I have 2500 2600 3000 3200 2700 2900 and 2850 okay so we interview let's say the interview students I'm not going to write this big long word problem and these were their monthly expenses I'm going to put that these are monthly what is the mean and the nearest cent? So we want to round to the nearest cent. So let's find the mean. So I'm going to add all of these up. Nothing repeats itself. So I'm going to add 2,500 plus 2,600. Right, you're entering all this in your calculator. Hopefully review. And I'm going to divide by how many there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I end up with 19,750 divided by 7. And I end up with, I'm going to show you how I round, 19,750 divided by 7. And I ended up with 2821. Point four two eight, and it keeps going. Now they said round to the nearest cent. When I pay for something, right, I have like 60 cents or 42 cents. So that means I need to round to the, I need to round this digit here. So I look at the number to the right. This number is greater, five or greater, so that means I'm going to round that up. So my answer is $2,821.43 per month because that H rounds the two up. So that is my mean. B, what is the median? So if I list these in numerical order, the smallest is 2,500, and then 2,600, 2,700, 2850, 2900, 3000, 3200. So median, start on the outside and walk your way in. So one, two, oh, this one's nice. There's exactly one in the middle. So 2850 is our median. Mode, there's none because nothing repeats itself. Now, you're going to get one of these problems um, on your homework. What would my expenses need to be for one month in order for the average, in order, well, in order for the average, to be 28.50. So they will ask you how, you know, what can we add or take away to create a certain mean. So remember, when they say average, they mean mean. So the total so far, I'm going to put total so far is 19.750. 
19,750. I don't know mine, so mine would be X. Divided by, I already have seven pieces of data, plus mine would be one more, to get a mean of 2850. So the reason I set it up this way is to find the average, we add up all of our expenses, we divide by how many of ours, and we get the mean. Well, they told me what they want the mean to be, so it was here. I'm only one other person, so that's why I already had seven amounts. So seven plus me would make this eight. So in order to solve this, I'm actually going to cross multiply. I think that's the fastest. <laughs> But if you don't like that method, that's fine. I'm going to cross multiply. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 2850 equals this times 1 is itself. Right? This top. So I'm, I'm cross multiplying. Um, so 8 times 2850. I end up with 22,800 equals 19,750. I'm going to subtract. And X equals my expenses for one month would have to be $3,050 in order to create a mean of 2850. Okay? All right. So that is a review of mean, median, and mode. Now I'm going to review how to use sigma notation. So um, sig uh, the sigma notation, sigma is a Greek symbol for mean. And I'm going to explain it. It is in your book, but I, I found it a little confusing. So sigma notation looks like the following. So x, remember this represents your mean, equals 1 over n times the sum of n over the index of 1 times xi. Whew, that looks super complicated. So know that the sigma symbol, that is the sigma, and it stands for sum. Okay, so let's break this down. This here is the symbol for mean. Okay. 1 over n times the sum of your values. So this is just all of your data. Okay. Um, I should also go over the letter I stands for index, um, whatever you're talking about, like your data. Okay. And, but I do need to go over everything else. So this n right here should be the number, um, the number, to be added. Like, am I adding six numbers? Am I adding seven numbers? Am I adding ten numbers? This here is the um, number you're starting with. And this here is the number you're ending with. Now, I, I realize that's a lot, so I'm going to do a, a problem with you to kind of break that down. So I'm going to give you the following pieces of data, okay? So um, I'm going to go January through December. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, got to start to September, October, whoops, huh, you guys, I skipped August. Here's the data. We have, hopefully we all know that there are 12 months in the year. Now, I'm going to identify each one of them using this index format. So this would be the first part of my January would be like data number one. And they, they use a symbol, X, and then a lower one, like it would be on, underneath the line or subscript. So X1. So when I say X1, I'm referring to the first piece of data, which is January. So February would be the second piece of data. So X subscript 2, this would be X baby 3, however you want to say it. X subscript 4, 5, 6, all the way to 12. Okay? Then I'm 
going to tell you, um, I'm going to give you a monthly cell phone bill. So this is actually example three. I'm going to give you a monthly cell phone bill. I should have wrote that down at the top. But I'm going to say January, $83. This was $86, $78, $82, $95. Seven, ninety, seventy-six, eighty-eight, eighty-two, eighty-three, seventy-one. All of these have dollar symbols. I'm just being lazy. Okay. So there's our data. In part A, I'm going to ask you to find the mean for entire year, okay, using the sigma notation. So here's how I would look at it. Entire year would mean that I'm looking for January to December. <laughs> Why did I write wrong? January to December. January represents X1, as we wrote up here. December represents X12. So here's how I would write it using sigma notation always begins with 1 over the num. This should be the number of data you're adding. So if I count all these up, I'm adding 12 numbers. Okay? I'm going to multiply that by the sum of, I'm going to begin with the first month, because I'm starting with January, so 1. And I'm going all the way to the 12th month, so this is 12. And um, this just means I'm going to add all the data in there. Okay, so you and I are actually, that's how you write the sigma notation. They want you to be familiar with it. But then we're going to go ahead and calculate the mean. So using your calculator, you would add all of these up. Okay, we know how to do that. Um, and we're going to divide by 12. I actually don't have the sum of what it all is. So 83 plus 86 plus 78 plus 82 plus 95 plus 87 plus 90 plus 76, plus 88, plus 82, plus 83, plus 71. And I got 1,001, and I'm dividing by 12, by, and I got the wrong number. All gone, because I entered something wrong. And that's what happens. Um, when you guys do things fast. So 83 plus 86 plus 78 plus 82 plus 95 plus 87 plus 90 plus 76 plus 88 plus 82 plus 83 plus 71. Divided by 12. <coughs> that was correct. And I got $83.40. One and then six, six. So this rounds that up to $83.42. Um, now I'd like to do the mean for the last six months. Okay? So the last six months of the year, if I'm going to count back from December, one, two, three, four, five, six, is July to December. Okay, and then I'm going to look. That means that they want me to use X7 through X12. So to write that in sigma notation, I 1 over. This right here should be the number of months I'm adding. And they already told me it's the last six months. So I'm, I'm adding the last six months. I'm finding the sum of this. I'm starting with the seventh month to the last month. And um, for XI. So I would just add the last six months. That'd be 90 plus 76 plus 88 plus 82 plus 83 plus 71 divided by six, and I got $81.70. Okay. So that is how you calculate um, using sigma notation. So for this next one. I'm actually just going to write it and see if you can determine it from what I write. So I'd like you to find the
the following mean, x equals 1 over 5, and the sum of i3 to 7 xi. Okay, so this is what I'd like you to calculate. So let's go over how to read this. This is telling us, this is telling us to start with, I should use notation in case you can't understand it later. Start with x3, end with x7. That is what this is saying. Okay? So I'm going to do exactly that. X3 is April, is March, so they want me to start with March, which would be $78, plus $82, plus $95, plus $87, all the way to July, which is $90, and I'm dividing, or multiplying, by one-fifth, because that five means that's how many I'm dividing by. And so that total, 78 plus 82 plus 95 plus 87 plus 90, gives me $442, $432 divided by 5. That gives me an average of $86.40. Okay. So that is how you read something like that. All right, last example for today is um, a frequency table. It is pretty... Um, they're going to use these in the later sections, otherwise I like, skip it. But frequency tables are really nice in that it's a shorter way to write a problem. And so um, I'm going, I think this is example four. I'm going to give you a monthly cost of identity theft. Here they are. I mean, there's a lot, okay? So they all have dollar signs, but $14.99, dollars $12.75, $14.99, $14.99. Um, I hate having to write all these, but I want to give you guys some examples to go home with. Well, I guess you're not going home. Huh? You're already home. That's just what I'm used to saying. Here's a bunch of data. There should be a total of 25. If I was to add this up, there should be 25 pieces of data. So I'm going to go ahead, and here is a frequency table. And I believe, sorry, I believe you're asked to build it for your homework. So uh, there are two topics here, right? Monthly costs. Frequency. Frequency is how many times that number occurs. This makes it super easy to find mode and mean. Median's a little bit more complicated, but it still can be done. So I'm going to start with the first item listed. It doesn't matter what order you put this in. So $14.99. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six of them, so frequency is six. The next item, I just go in order of how it's listed, is $12.75. Remember, this is all dollars. And there is only two. The next item listed is $9.99. There's one, two. The next item listed is $25. One, two, three, four, five. The next item listed is a 10. And there are one, three, four, five, Oops. and the next, I have just 20, one, two, three, four, and the only number left is 12, and there's only one of them. So, I'm going to find the total, and like I said, if I added all these up, this should be 25. So, how we use this 
is pretty cool. I'm now going to find the mean. So using this data on this frequency table, instead of entering 1499 plus 1499 plus 1496 times, you would simply enter in your calculator, and this is what I showed you earlier. So the mean equals, there are six 1499s, so six times 1499, plus two times 1275, plus two times 999, plus two, my apologies, plus five times 25, plus five times 10, plus four, 20, plus 12. You don't need to put 12 times one because we all know what that E is. And then I'm gonna divide that by 25, right? So if you enter all of that and you divide, I ended up with a mean of $16.10. Okay, B, mode. Mode is super easy. You just look at which one has the largest frequency. And the largest frequency is the 1499. See, if I wanted to use median with a frequency table, I know that there are 25, so number 13 is in the middle, but I have to list it in numerical order, right? So 999, there are two of them. Uh, 10, there's five, 12, there's one of those. 1275 is two, 1499 has six, 20 has six, four and 25 has five, but I'm looking for number 13. So two plus five is seven, plus one is eight, nine, 10. Woo! I would stop right here. So 1499 would be the 13th number. If I listed this twice and this five times and this one, 1499 would be the middle one. Um, your homework for 1.1, 1 .1, you're gonna Skip, and it's on the computer already, numbers 8, 9, and 12. Thank you. Whoops. I have to unlock my computer, but you can, the video is done. So, goodbye.